There's actually quite a couple of students with diverse learning needs in the classrooms. So how do you cope with having these children? Because sometimes they may be acting up or having behaviours. How do you cope with that? <laughs> you, you learn, you get taught how to do it. And, and we have support teachers. We have two educational assistants. Mm -hmm. So we have one who works with Danny mm -hmm. and one who works with Mateo. The question that comes up a lot is, you know, this, it's a misunderstanding of workload. Some people disagree with me on this, but I truly believe that inclusive education and teaching to diversity is not more work, but it is absolutely different work. Collaboration might be the next most important piece because a teacher by themselves can't design for everyone. But a teacher with a specialist, a support person, even another teacher who says, what could we do? Suddenly, together you're creating things that make a difference. But teachers need a choice of what collaboration looks like. And so in our school, what we did was we offered co-teaching as an option, but we also offered co-planning, we also offered co-assessing, because you have to know how that person is supportive. And so in order to figure that out, we have to define what those roles and responsibilities are before we actually go into the classroom. Our school is 533 students. We have 60 identified students who are on individual education plan that are identified by the ministry as having special needs. Our staff population is around 55 people and we have 18 educational assistants. So that's a fairly big number, right? And we're very lucky to have that. Classroom teachers are very supportive of having all students in their classroom. We support them by having support teachers, and those teachers help bring a program to them and they devise it together. We also put educational assistants, EAs, in their classroom. They're not there just for one person, they're there for all students. The other piece is that we have district uh, staff, so we have school psychologists, speech and language pathologists, occupational therapists, physical therapists, etc., who can provide support. And that's been an interesting kind of evolution in that we're moving more from direct service with those people more to consultation so that they assist people in learning the strategies that work for children. I'm actually very interested to find out about your role and what sort of work do you do together. I mean, for the most part, it's a teacher's role to do the planning. And then based on what we're seeing in the class, we will consult after school if we notice that there's something that could be changed or adapted, just kind of collaborate together that way. When I specifically work with Spencer, some of the things that I do as an EA is I help, well in the mornings we start out with the hearing aid, get his microphone all set up, I also help with toileting, feeding, support him when he's at the table. I can help walk around and just give support wherever needed in the classroom when Spencer is set up and is independent. Um, so basically you help. We're, in, in there's, the exactly, there's so much to say, I'm trying to think about it because every student is so different. So do you think you'll be able to cope if there were no EAs in the class? It depends on the kids. The EAs are mainly for the low incidence students. If someone like with Down syndrome or someone who needs one-on-one -on -one with them. High incidence oh is like someone who has a learning disability and so like they can function fine in the yeah. classroom, they just need an extra little bit of support. So how do you share the responsibility of the educational plan with the EA? Educational plan is made with the teachers and the parents and the EAs sit in on the plan so they know the goals. They go to school for over a year as well. Mm. So they're really good at seeing what the teachers are doing and adapting some right. things. I think often in Singapore we think that the mainstream teacher does the mainstream stuff and if any child has special needs, it's the special needs teacher yeah. that does that part. But what I see here is not divide and conquer, it's let's work together. And really believing that together, the support is far richer. It just showed how much thoughtful planning has to go into it. Over a decade, they had to look at 
the curriculum to make sure that it serves all learners. They had to look at preparing the educators from both the general education system and the special schools to teach the learners together. But for the worlds to meet, there has to be conversation, collaboration. I think is key to the success of inclusion. And it's something that perhaps you and I, as we consider the way forward, how we can work with our staff me in a mainstream setting and you with your special educators to champion this aspect of inclusion.